remember those old TVs that had a knob that you would have to shift and you would have to turn it pretty hard in order to get to the next channel? And it was very obvious that when there was white noise, do you remember it would make that like really loud sound? Right now, even today, if you're sitting in front of a TV screen and you're watching the news, but you want to be watching, let's say, a nature show, then you know you're not upset at the TV when you're not the one trying to change the channel. You're only going to be able to watch the news because you're on the news channel. We understand this in the terms of the TV, right? We understand that whatever channel we have turned the TV to is the channel that we would be receiving. The sound in the picture of that station is what is going to influence our environment, right? We are going to be hearing the sounds of the news. We are going to be seeing the pictures of the news if that's the channel that we're on. Well, we have something called our reticular activating system. This system alerts our senses and our conscious minds to things that we want to focus on. So as an example, have you ever bought a new car or bought some sort of outfit and it's like you've never seen that car, you've never seen that outfit before, but you buy it and then all of a sudden you notice that color car or that type of car, right? It's like you've never seen it, but now everybody has it. This is your reticular activating system at work. You made an investment and this investment was important to you. And now your conscious mind is signaling to the rest of your senses that we need to pay attention to this because it's of importance. If I'm watching the news and all they're reporting about is information that is making me fearful, that is making me anxious, that I'm not entirely convinced is even true, I don't get angry at the TV. I'm not angry at the news station for doing the thing that I know the news will do, right? I don't get upset at that. I understand that I can't control the news anchor. I can't control what they are or are not reporting, but I can control if I sit and listen to it. If that's the only thing coming into my uh, ear gates and my eye gates, if that's the thing that's influencing my environment, because I am in control of my environment. I can turn off the TV, I can change the channel, I can get up and walk away from the TV. There are many options that I have here in terms of having my environment influenced by outside resources. And the same thing should be true when you think about the narcissist. Can you control what the narcissist is gonna say to you, how they're gonna react to you, how they're going to uh, try to derail whatever next event that you have or, or whatever plan that you have going on? No, you can't prevent them from doing those things, however, when you understand that you are the one holding the remote, so to speak, in this situation, you are the one in absolute control, it makes it a lot easier for you to understand how to respond when the narcissist does or says certain things to you. One option is absolutely to sit in front of the TV and be upset that the news is saying things and doing things that you don't agree with, which is how most people spend their lives in dealing with the narcissist instead of learning how to turn the channel or learning how to get up and walk away from it altogether. I've said many times on this channel before that the most important part of dealing with the narcissist is you. You can never control what the narcissist says or does, but you can always control the way that it impacts you and how it affects you. This is impossible to do if the only channel you are constantly having on and sitting in front of is the narcissist's voice. It's time to turn that channel off. Now at this point, somebody out there is saying, I can't turn the channel off. I live with the narcissist or I co-parent with the narcissist or whatever their situation is. Your brain, every second, takes in 200 trillion bits of information and it narrows it down to 200 bits of information per second. In other words, if the thing wasn't important to you, if it didn't have a hold over you, if the trauma bond was truly broken, if you were truly healed from this experience, you would be able to tune out that channel. Right now, I wanna do a quick exercise with you to prove my point. Start paying attention to every single thing in front of your line of sight without turning your head. What's right in front of you, pay attention to it. List these things out loud right now. For me, that's my microphone. I can see the screen in front of my camera, my ring light, I can see the keyboard, I can see that I have some pens over here, I have a diffuser, I have my computer station over here, right? I can see these things. I've got notebooks, I've got my laptop. For me, none of the things that I can see in my immediate surroundings are as important as my screen. And now I want you to ignore the things that you see and pay attention to your sounds. Every sound that you hear, I want you to close your eyes even and start listing out these sounds. I can hear my background music in the other room playing. I can hear my washer and dryer down the hall. I can hear the slow spin of my fans going as well. 
And maybe right now you became aware of noises that you didn't hear before and that you were used to tuning out, right? Right now, you consciously turned your mind to be aware of your of the noises. You turned your attention to those things. But a second ago, you were ignoring all of those noises because it, they weren't important. But I asked you to pay attention to it now, and so you were able to do so. And this is exactly what I'm talking about when I tell you that you don't need to have 100% of your attention and focus on the narcissist all of the time. Yet so many people insist on doing it because they don't understand that there's another way to live. By the way, these are just two of the senses that I had you go through. I didn't have you notice what things were going on in your conscious mind and what your thoughts were that you've had all day. I didn't ask you what you were smelling, what you were feeling, what you were tasting. Every second, your brain is focusing on the things that you tell it to focus on. Your reticular activating system is waiting for you to give it a command so that it can start paying attention to the things that you are interested in and that it can start filtering out the things that you aren't. If you wanna be successful, if you wanna be totally healed and free of the narcissist, if you wanna start focusing on thriving instead of just surviving, you need to change the channel. Like so many important things in life, this is simple, but it isn't necessarily easy. During my time as a coach, I have discovered that there are eight pillars for narcissistic abuse recovery. My narcissistic detox intensive takes you through all eight of these pillars. It shows you how to retrain your brain to focus on the things that will help you grow, not the things that will destroy you. It teaches you how to harmonize your spirit, soul, and body so that you don't have parts of yourself that are working against you. You might want to move on from the narcissist, but there's something always holding you back. If that's you and you are truly ready to reprogram the way that you think and behave, I want you to text the word DETOX to 512-677-9322. Not everybody qualifies, so understand that I'm only taking people who are truly committed to their healing. The other thing about the healing process is that not everybody moves at the same pace. Some people need to see if time will make things better. I often describe this concept as having a compound fracture that needs immediate attention, but the person with the injury doesn't want to admit that it's that bad. They think they need to learn how to fix it themselves, so they do the bare minimum, like Googling or YouTubing videos in order to see how they can fix the problem themselves. They might find temporary relief with some of the instructions that they find, but this doesn't lead to true and lasting healing. There's no shame or guilt or condemnation if that is you now or if that has been you in the past, but you could speed up your healing process and ensure that there's not further damage done while you are wounded and trying to do the right thing to fix your injury by going to a professional. I'm so confident in my program that I offer a money back guarantee for it. For me, at this point in doing all of this stuff with narcissistic abuse recovery, if it doesn't work, if it isn't successful in reshaping people's lives, then it isn't worth me putting my effort, energy, and my most important resource, which is time, into it. I think you are worth investing in. I think you are worth the commitment that it takes to recover from narcissistic abuse and ensure that you are never a victim again. Do you? Talk is cheap. Now is truly the time to start putting movement behind faith and words. Don't leave this year in the same position or worse than when it started. There's just a few final points that I want to leave you with. One of which is that the TV might be on, but that doesn't mean that you need to be the one sitting in front of it all day. You are the one in control of the remote. That's another mindset shift that people have to go through when they're recovering from narcissistic abuse is understanding that the TV can be controlled. The TV can be turned on and off. You can lower the volume on the TV. You can shift your attention away from the TV. You don't have to stay in the same room as the TV. You are able to walk away from the narcissist when it is truly that important to you. Will it take dedication? And do you likely need to have a supportive community around you in order to break the trauma bond? Yes, but it's absolutely possible. Once you understand that you're actually the one in control, you actually have the power in the situation and not the TV, not the narcissist, is when you truly start to make a change. So if nothing else, I hope this video has done that sort of resetting and mindset shifting in you. And if you're ready to take the next step, truly ready to commit to yourself, to invest in yourself apart from the narcissist, then text me at 512-677-9322. And if you're one of the people who think that time will just naturally heal your trauma bond with a narcissist, I want you to check out this video.